On the first inside Oswego Speedway of 2014, we look back at the 53rd annual Novella Super Modified kickoff at Oswego Speedway, the first event of the season. After the May 3rd Isma Super Modified weekend was rained out and time trials would start the day with track records on the line in each division and Jack Patrick and the Longley Brothers Dodge car number nine shattered the previous record for the SPS division with a lap of 18.596 seconds. Oh, it was a perfect lap. Uh, the first lap was pretty quick and I seen the 7-1 and I knew that was good enough, but uh, the car was perfect so I tried real hard to get a good second lap and it was, it was much better than I thought it was going to be but I, I've been telling my crew all year long that the tires are so good and the motor's good and I, I said we'd be, we'd be able to run a five on the right conditions and we had them tonight. On the super modified side of the pit area it was Bomb Bond in the 4.7s Motorsports number 47 setting quick time with a brand new track record of 16.098 seconds in his Hawk chassis. Bond turned a lap of 16.0 last season and some wondered if we would ever see an official lap at 16 flat. Yeah the car was um, just about perfect and the uh, tires were good and that's what you get a track record I guess. Oh, you never know, you know, the tires get better and better and the tires go faster and faster and always something new coming out to go faster. With time trials in the books to set heat racing lineups, the heat races were up next and the first small block super qualifying heat would see Danny Apt in the 4.7's Motorsports Small Block Super Modified number 57 jump out into the early race late and what a battle it was between Apt, Mike Bruce in the 22, Andrew Shartner in the 18, and Tim Guru back in the small block class yet again driving the number 5. That is the Dalton Doyle number 01 from last season. Doyle waiting for completion of his new Hawk Small Block Super Modified chassis. Guru now will be a teammate on that team this year. Danny Apt in the 57 would go on to get the win in qualifying heat number one. In heat race number two, it was the 1-4 racing number 04 of Craig Harris and 16-year-old Anthony Lacerdo in the Lighthouse Lanes, car number one, starting up there on the front row, and Lacerdo would get the early edge in the one machine with Mike Bond in the number 74 car, following suit on the high side, working his way by Harris down the front stretch and into corner number one. Bond would eventually close in on the back bumper of Lacerdo Lacerdo down the back straightaway, and Lacerdo in the one car got into the third corner just a little too hot, losing the back end on that machine and going around. He would have to restart at the tail side of the field. Bond would inherit the lead in the 74 and would promptly run away from the field to get the win in small block super modified qualifying heat race number two over Craig Harris in the 04, Steve Apt in the 67, and John Tessarario in the 47. Fast qualifier Jack Patrick would win the third and final qualifying heat. Moving now to the Novellus Super Modified Division. Three heat races on tap as well with Michael Muldoon and David Danzer in the 52. Bringing the field to green down the front stretch, Pat Lavery in the 22 car would move to the inside to take the runner-up spot into corner number one. But Muldoon in that brand new Muldoon Racing chassis would lead from green to checkered to take the win over Lavery, Danzer, Ray Graham in that order. Qualifying heat race number two would see Jessica Zemkin in her first regular super modified feature event and Joe Gosick from up there in row number one. Gosick would dart into the early race lead, but there was trouble behind. The four car of Bob Reese would tag the foam in corner number three. We're told the throttle actually hung open on that car, causing Reese to tag the wall on the outside of corner number three. Later on, after the restart, Otto Sitterly would move up into the runner-up spot, diving to the inside of Dave Gruel, but Gruel would then swap ends in corner number one. Zemkin with nowhere to go would find her night end in the outside foam in corner number one. A tough break for Zemkin in car number 11. She would be done for the night. When it would go back to green flag racing, we had a tremendous battle up front in this one. Between the two veterans in the Novella Super Modified field, Joe Gosick in the double zero, Otto Sitterly on the outside in the GNI Holmes car number seven. Sitterly could find the outside lane into the corner, but couldn't quite keep the momentum he needed on exit in that machine. And Gosick in the double O would go on to get the heat race win in that order ahead of Sitterly, Jeff Abold, and Gruel in the 50. 
Third and final qualifying heat race for the night saw Randy Ritzkis in the Lock Crane Services car number 37 in his full-time return to Oswego Speedway. Get the jump off the green as Bob Bond would follow suit up into that runner-up spot in the 47. Brian Sweeney riding in third. Ritzkis would lead from green to checkered in this one, taking the win over Bond, your new track record holder in second. Brian Sweeney in third and Davey Hamilton would round out the top four. We'll be back right after this with feature highlights. New York State's fastest action is back for the month of May. The Memorial Day weekend triple header at Oswego Speedway. Saturday, May 24. It's the Jim Champagne Memorial Super Modified 75. Featuring Wing Sprint Car veteran Jessica Zemkin. The Richie Evans Memorial ROC Modified 75. And the Tony White Memorial SBS 35. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. The Memorial Day weekend triple header at Oswego Speedway. Saturday, May 24. Kids 16 and under free. Finally, the first main event of the 2014 Oswego Speedway racing season, ready to take the green, the Mitchell Speedway Press Planet Fitness 30 lap main event for the Pathfinder Bank Small Block Supers would see John Tessarario and Danny Apt up there on the front row, four sevens motorsports teammates in row number one, and it was Tessarario in search of his first career Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super main event victory dashing out into the early race lead in car number 57. Further back, Mike Bruce in the number 22 was starting to work his way through the field, but we had a GoPro look of the moves that Bruce was able to make in the 22 down the front straightaway. Bruce making the low move stick on Harith out of corner number four to move into position number four. Just three laps into the event, chasing down Apt. JJ Andrews in the 93 and your continued race leader, Tessarario, out in front. Further back, Mike Bond in the 74, Timmy Garou in the five would come together in corner number three. Garou would be done for the night in the outside foam. Bond would rebound after going to the pit area to charge back through the field for a top five finish like we've seen him do so many times in his illustrious small block career. After the restart, Team Tap Out Racers Barry Kingsley and Jason Simmons began to work their way through the field. Kingsley on the low side gets under the number 98 car. His teammate Simmons out of corner number two as they work down the back stretch. But later on, Simmons would be able to pull the same move back, bringing Andrew Shartner in the 18 machine along with him to the low side into corner number one as Tessarario continues to have about a car length lead on the field into corner number three. Meanwhile, Bruce was able to make a high side move move on Danny Apt to get the third, but then got crossed up with J.J. Andrews as Apt, Bruce, and Andrews would all collect against each other. Coming out of the fourth corner, Danny Apt taking a wild ride in the number 57 machine into the outside wall. We once again had another GoPro look on the 22 of Bruce on this accident coming out of corner number four as he and Andrews get together. Apt tries to shoot the gap on the low side. All three cars come together, knocking both Apt and Bruce out of the event. All three drivers were A-OK. -okay. In fact, Andrews actually got back onto the speedway for about two or three laps to try and gain as many points as he could in the battle for the championship. Another slow motion look of the incident down the front straightaway. A true testament to the safety features and design of these race cars after watching that accident of Danny Abt hitting that outside steel wall as you get one more look at it in slow motion here. Down the front stretch to three cars tangling and Abt just a hellacious ride into the outside wall. He was able to climb out of that race car with no issue. Obviously, he was finished for the evening. On the restart, that would actually move Andrew Shartner up to second, Barry Kingsley into third, and Jack Patrick would move to fourth with an inside move on Cameron Rowe. Coming out of the fourth corner and down the front stretch, so Jack Patrick, your new track record holder, slicing his way through the field into the top five. With about seven laps to go, Andrew Shartner made a low side move on Tessarario for the race lead. Tessarario did a great job to hang on to that race car, getting out of shape out of corner number one and down the back stretch, but he would lose several spots, falling back to about sixth or seventh on the speedway. 
and that would leave Andrew Shartner all alone and out in front in this one as he would pull on to career win number 10 in the Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Division ahead of Barry Kingsley, Jack Patrick, Cameron Rowe, and as we said, Mike Bond working all the way back up into the top five. Steve App, John Tesserario, Craig Harris, David LaTulip, and Josh Kerr would be your top 10 positions as Andrew Shartner moves to Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane to talk to Keith Zare. We were a little free in the time trials and I knew that that was gonna be where we wanted to be and we'd set it up for the feature for it to come in. But first things first, uh, it takes away from it a little bit. I don't. I definitely don't want to run anyone over to win the race and that was a little disappointing. I still, I gotta watch the tape. I don't know if he came down or if I drove in hard on him, but if I did, you know, I apologize for that because that's not the way I want to win. I prefer to go by him, you know, clean and green. But, uh, you know, I'm happy for my crew. We won this thing. And uh, after the way we normally start the season, this is, uh, this is good. We needed this because normally we're running eighth, ninth, tenth. So uh, special thanks to Ray Hedger, my dad, Tom, who's not here. So this will be interesting. The car owner's gone. Uh, Gary, Scott, Beaver River Distribution, all the sponsors, and uh, Russ Brown. It's uh, an accomplishment, my girlfriend, for letting me fly up here to do this every weekend. I'm very lucky for that. Well, I, I don't know really what I expected. I know all three cars out of our stable were fast tonight. Um, just uh, glad to have the opportunity to drive for Team Tap Out. Those guys got a, a great organization. They're a great bunch of guys. Great cars, great motors. Everything's just uh, come right together for me tonight. Not so much for my other two teammates. We had a fast car all night. and. Uh, it was handling really good, except on those restarts, it was a little bit loose, but yeah, if, if we had a few more laps, I don't know, I might have been able to get back Barry in. Andrew was taking off out front pretty good there, I don't know if I'd have got him, but Barry was giving me the outside lane, but the tires were a little worn at that point, and I don't know if I could have gone out there. I tried it a couple of times and it got loose, but all in all, a pretty good night though for Longley Dodge, Red Baron Pizza, number nine. Looking now at the SBS standings after one week of racing, Shartner has the point lead over Jack Patrick, Mike Bond, Barry Kingsley, and Steve Apt rounds out the current top five. New York State's fastest action is back for the month of May. The Memorial Day weekend triple header in Oswego Speedway. Saturday, May 24th, it's the Jim Champagne Memorial Super Modified 75. Featuring Wings Sprint Car veteran Jessica Zemkin. The Richie Evans Memorial ROC Modified 75. And the Tony White Memorial Memorial SBS 35. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. The Memorial Day weekend triple header at Oswego Speedway. Saturday, May 24. Kids 16 and under free. Finally, to cap off the evening on Saturday night, the moment everybody's been waiting for since last September, our first Novella Super Modified main event of the 2014 season presented by Speedway Press and Planet Fitness of Oswego with Jeff Abold and Michael Muldoon up there on the front row. That's Ray Graham in the number 90 machine going into corner number one. He got touched from behind, got sent up the racetrack, but did a great job to gather that race car back up and continue on as we stayed green flag racing with Abel down in front, leading Muldoon and Joe Gosick in the double zero ahead of David Danzer, Randy Ritzkis, and Dave Gruel in the number 50 machine. Gruel in that brand new Hawk chassis making moves early on up and around Ritzkis, but Randy in the Lock Crane Services 37 got a touch loose coming out of corner number two, overcorrected that race car as you see here on the replay. These 1,800 pound cars with all the weight to the left side don't like to be swung back to the right side. Ritzkis lost it, tagged the steal in turn two, did come back out for about two or three laps, but would eventually call it a night in the 37 machine. After the restart, Gruel in that 50 car found the outside to his liking early on as he moves to the top side and goes around the Danzer number 52 out of corner number two as Joe Gosick works to the high side of the Muldoon 51 coming out of corner number four. Gosick to the top side, got to the racetrack about an hour late on Saturday, only got a few hot laps, but went on to win his qualifying heat race and early on ran in the runner-up spot in this one. As the field works up through corner number three, Gruel darts a little bit high, trying to find the high lane on Muldoon, leaving the low side open for Danzer to retake that fourth position. Danzer in the 52 started in fifth, now back up to fourth, but Gruel would find the top side one more time. These two drivers went back and forth at least two or three times. Tremendous racing here in the early going of this 50 lapper. 
As the field streams out of corner number four and down the front stretch further back, you can see Otto Sitterly and Bob Bond working through the field, but Gruel in the 50 would lose brakes on that machine going into corner number one, tag the rear end of the Muldoon 51. Brian Sweeney would go around as well. Hamilton actually got into the back of the Sweeney machine that tore the front wing off the GNI Homes number six machine, and Davy Hamilton would be done for the night. On the restart, Gozik, who was running in the runner up spot, ran into issues under the hood of the double zero. They said later on it felt as though the car dropped a cylinder or two. They were not sure as of Saturday night what the issue was, but what we do know is Gozik went pit side and was done for the evening. As the race wore on, Jeff Abold in that new Abold machine that debuted last season and saw a lot of work done to it over the offseason to get it up to speed continues to lead the way. And as the laps wound down, it looked as though Abold may be able to hang on for his first career Novella Super Modified Main Event win. But David Danzer was not going to go away quietly as he pulls up to the back bumper out of corner number four as Otto Sitterly works to the high side of Bond down the front stretch, nearly tagging the outside wall. The Sitterly 7, which is actually the car Dave Schulich Jr. drove last season as number two, trying to work the high side one more time out of corner number four. The Sitterly team did a lot of work to that car in the offseason, actually converting the front end over to a more traditional style Hawk front end. Sitterly trying to get all he can out of that car up into the top five, but up in front, David Danzer finally found the room he needed to the low side of the speedway to work under Able to take the top spot. On lap number 42, Able trying to hang on to that runner-up spot, washes a little bit high behind the 66 of Lou LeVay Sr. The abled machine got looser and looser as the race went on, but Jeff did a great job to hang on to that car to finish in the top five positions. But out in front, it was all David Danzer in the waning stages of this one as he goes on to collect career win number four at Oswego Speedway over Sitterly. Bond, Sweeney, and Abled in the top five. Joey Payne and Michael Muldoon finished ahead of Ray Graham, Brandon Bellinger, and Pat Lavery. David Danzer with wins in each of his first four seasons in Novella's Super Modified competition. Uh, Caught the first couple laps a little loose, but I mean, Jeffrey Abel ran a great race. I mean, he I mean, he was good. I didn't think I was going to get him, but you see, uh, I think his car loosened up just a little bit, but. I had Bond's eye in there a little bit, but traffic I was really worried about. I seen Otto move up and I don't know, four cars had me, couldn't really make a move, so you're kind of just hanging on there hoping nobody pulls up alongside you. But hey, I like to thank all my guys. I like to thank Ferdy's, Premier Landscaping, Dogs, uh, Poor City, Premier Living Suites, Bridge Street Jewelers, Air Gas, Stingray Transportation. I gotta thank all my guys. They worked their butt off all I mean this is our backup car, so I can't wait to get that new one out now. Oh, well, it didn't actually work that good tonight. It got better at the end, but it wasn't that good at the beginning. And uh, a lot of fast cars and a lot of guys hungry that want to use the track. So take what you can get. Um, I don't know. I've got mixed emotions. The car that sat tonight that I've run the last three years has probably got the highest win, win percentage at the track. It's just been a real good car. So I'm not exactly sure. We'll, we'll probably run this one in a couple weeks and you know, assess from there. Uh, it's tough starting in the back and uh, a lot of good cars. Everybody's running good. but. Um, the car might not have been perfect for the feature, but the um, guys in front of me really hit the setup. They were good. With qualifying points being awarded for time trials, Otto Sitterly is your current Novella Super Modified Championship leader ahead of David Danzer. Bob Bond, Brian Sweeney, and Jeff Abold in the top five. Michael Muldoon and Ray Graham, sixth and seventh.